I'm John. Welcome to So Awkward. What are we doing? We're... We're answering questions today. Yeah, we're answering questions that you asked us to enter into the giveaway for this. And this. I guess let's get started. Yeah. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to read the questions. And then as we, as we read the question... She's going to write down the name. We're going to put them in this box. And at the end of the video, we'll shake it up. And we'll just pick one. And then you get to win this cool stuff. And then, if we pick your name at the end, send us an email. Or leave a comment. And then, we're going to need your address. So hopefully you're over 18. If you're not, get your parents' permission or whatever. <laughs> With it, I don't know if we mentioned this in the last video. You gotta live in the United States. <laughs> if you don't, and we and you won, let us. We're not shipping internationally. Sorry. No. Should, sorry. should we have mentioned that before? Probably. Sorry. Oops. Ashley George says, "Not to be rude, but do you like being so awkward? Do you like Funko Pops? We like Funko Pops. We like Funko. Do you like being so awkward? Not really." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, does that question mean do we like doing this show? Which, yeah, that's fine. I, right. But I like, like the show. Do I like being awkward? Not, not really. Fabian Hernandez. Oh, you want to see the screen? No are offense. you Are you too awkward 24-7 or is it just for <laughs> YouTube? I like the awkwardness. All the time. <laughs> You've, uh, m many times, usually after we... We'll go to a restaurant or something, and we'll say, we, like, after the waitress comes over, and it's awkward. Like, we'll warm us, we'll usually say, oh, we should have filmed that. <laughs> we could make a whole series of films just our interaction with wait waiters and waitresses. Yeah. It's not an act. It's not an act. Marty X. How did you two awesomely awkward people meet? Thank you, Marty. I'll let you uh, answer that one. We, Several people asked this. I don't, yeah, I don't think of, we're going to... A lot of people asked this. We met at work. We both work... Can I say where we work? Do people know where we work? Nobody sometimes, asked. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you might see me with, with a cup from work. <laughs> we work at Starbucks. Yeah, we work at Starbucks. That's fine. Uh, I started there. It's a good company to work for. I started there five years ago. You already worked there. Mm -hmm. You were there my first day. Was I? You were. Um, our manager at that time left, and I had all this reading to do, and you were the only one that even seemed to care that I was new. <laughs> And then I invited you to probably a horrible thing for you. <laughs> a Hanson concert. There was something about you. It was intriguing. Um, we're not, nobody asked this. We're not dating. We're not married. No. People have asked that on our channel before, but not as a part of the q and I just figured I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Don't worry. Neither of us are offended to not be... We'll get into that one some other time. Um, but there was something about you, and I, so I invited you to meet for lunch. And I'm her supervisor. But it was kind of like, I kind of viewed it as kind of like a mentor thing at first. Like, this, here's this interesting person that I see a lot of myself in. Like, I want to get to know this person. But then from there, we became friends. But yeah, the Hanson concert. Sorry. No, it, they were really good. We should do a Hanson episode. We could. I love Hanson. Matt Mugato, my my longtime internet friend. Never met him in person, but he and I we go back to various other websites we both have just 
we've probably, probably been contacting with each other on the internet for 10 years, maybe longer. He's got a website currently where he's been slowly reviewing every Star Trek episode and film in chronological order. Oh man. He's been doing it for like 10 years. He's, I don't know if he's ever going to finish. He's towards the end of Deep Space Nine. The link is here. You should read it. His, his reviews are very funny. He's a funny guy. Is there a movie or song that makes you cry every time it comes on? Oh. We're getting a little emotional here. Um. Strap in. This is going to be a long video. I don't, I don't think so. Really? Really. A movie? Not that I can think of. I forgot. You have no heart. I have no heart. What makes you cry? Come on, it's uh, from Matt the, the last, the last episode of Xena makes me cry. Oh, but that could just be because it's awful. I've never seen it. Don't watch it. Also, the episode of Buffy called The Body oh, sure. makes yeah. me cry every time. That's a really good episode. <laughs> I can think of a movie. E.T. Oh. E.T. makes me cry just thinking about it. I saw E.T. on my birthday when it came out. And I saw it with my friend Max Varney, who died. Not during the movie. He died years <laughs> later. So every time... So already, just E.T. on its own is heart-wrenching. But now when I rewatch it, and I don't rewatch it. Even though it's one of, my, it's one of the best movies ever made. Oh, I'm getting a little choked up right now. I always think about Max. So E.T. makes me cry. Ronald Cagato. What other YouTube channels shows you like? I love My Drunk Kitchen. With our friend Hannah Hart. Hannah Hart. <laughs> I really like, and I mentioned this in our AVGN movie review, that I really like the Angry Video Game Nerd. He was what got me not just watching YouTube, but also on YouTube. I think he's really funny and really clever. I like the red letter media people who aren't necessarily YouTube personalities, but they're internet. They do the Plinket reviews and Half in the Bag. You've probably never seen any of them. He was the guy, one of them, Jack, came into our Starbucks like a year ago. Oh. I said, hey, I met this guy from the uh, YouTube show. And he, uh, Jack Packard, he's the tall, bald guy. He looks like Moby on, uh, Best of the Worst. He's on that one. And previously recorded where he talks about video games. And he came into our store once. And you know, at Starbucks, you take the order and you write down names. And I said, and your name's Jack, right? And he said, how did you know my name? And I said, I, I recognize you from the internet. And I said, I'm a fan. And he said, he was really kind of creeped out. <laughs> <laughs> no. But then he said, like he was, he said, is it weird that this is the first time I've ever been recognized. And I said, it's, I figured you get swarmed all the time. And he said, no, I've never been recognized before. Well, that was cool. Somebody named Tanya, who I asked my sister if it was her, because her name was Tanya, and she said, what have you found to be the most overrated, overpriced Funko Pop? I don't know. You know what? I think the most expensive Funko Pop of all, there's like one made on um, that movie, A Clockwork Orange, oh, which is really right. weird because that movie's all about rape and murder. Have you ever seen it? I haven't. I think that one's it's like thousands of dollars because oh. it's, it's super limited. I think that's the most expensive I've seen. That's it, ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Matthew Baxter, when did and what was your first pop figure you both bought? The first one I bought was Donald Duck that I bought for you, but I think I bought him with Gandalf. You did. And then I, I got the Wizard of Oz ones that were out at the time, uh, Dorothy the Monkey and the Wicked Witch. Yeah, because my first pops were the ones that you gave me, which was Gandalf and Donald. And then things just got out of control. Omar Alba. What was the best cheeseburger you guys ever had? That's a good question. This is a good oh, one. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> uh, there's a really good burger 
add this little, of course you do, this little bar called Matt's. World famous. Yeah, on 35th and Cedar. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Exactly. Uh, it's called a Juicy Lucy. <laughs> they were so excited about it, they forgot the I in Juicy. Uh, the cheese is inside the burger. Cheese is inside the burger. I'm from Connecticut originally, where we put cheese on top of the burger. Everybody out here loves Matt's Bar, the Juicy Lucy. It's a really good burger, though. I will. It's, if you ever come to Minneapolis, it's fun. James Hall. Same question, but two answers. What is your Funko Pop Grail? Brackets. If you could have any pop that currently exists, what would it be? Uh, I want this clockwork orange one that's worth thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars. Good answer. I really want... I'm, I'm pretty much now just... There's too many pops. There's a lot. I'm focusing it just on Batman. Because that's what I have the most of. I think that's what I like the most. So I really want... And I'll never buy them because they're expensive. It's the the villains. They don't make them anymore. They're all retired. The Penguin, the Riddler, and Two-Face. I really want the Penguin the most because I think he's really cute. But they're at like $60, $70, I have Bane, who's also worth a lot. I don't have the box. Save the boxes now. For, for a while, <laughs> we were really stupid and we just threw all the boxes away. Yeah. I'd be sitting on a gold mine if we kept those boxes. <laughs> Eric's World. What, in your opinion, is the coolest aspect about YouTube? What is your favorite Funko Pop that you own? Two questions doesn't get you two entries. In my opinion, the coolest aspect about YouTube is being able to, um, like we're sitting in our, my apartment. Hopefully we're going to get this up today. And then people will watch it and then comment. Today. Like, yeah. I, th I think that's really cool. Like, people... I've met people, not necessarily in person, but I'm in contact now and am friends with people all over the world just because we make these stupid videos. <laughs> I just think it's cool that people watch this. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, everybody. Are we answering what our favorite Funko Pops are? Oh, yeah. I think I might pick the Donald Duck Pop, because that was the first one he bought me. And I, I have a small Don. I mean, I, my name's Donald, so I, I like Donald Duck. What's yours? I think it's Dorothy. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I really, I like the first ones that we got. Spartanite 67. If you had to choose a comic book character to be president of the world, who would you choose? I don't know. There was a comic book uh, called Prez, <laughs> which was about a teenager who becomes president of the United States. Yeah. And his name was Prez Rickard. It was. It came out like in the late '60s. I think it was by Joe Simon. I don't remember the name of the artist. And it was when they they legally changed the voting age to 18, and everybody thought that the world would go crazy, so they did this comic book about an 18-year-old who was elected president. So I would choose Prez to be president of the world. I think it'd be pretty good. It's a really weird comic. If you can ever find it, check it out. I think it lasted like three issues. I don't read comics. You read comic strips? In, in fact, I think the only comic I've read is Buffy. President of the world. Okay. Should be all right. Buffy. Louis De La Cruz. Who came up with the idea of making a YouTube channel? I don't know. I'm not sure. Allison H. If you could get Funko to make a series of pops, what would it be? Allison H., you should watch our Funko wishlist videos, which there are two. We reached on two top <laughs> ten lists. But I think my number one was James Bond. I think that's what I most want to see. I want to see a line of James Bond Funkos. My number one was Xena. Yeah. Twice. Chuby Lego. Great name. What was the first sandwich you ever ate that had bacon? It's my favorite <laughs> question so far. That's a good question. That's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> Although I, I don't know if I know the answer to that. 
When I was a kid, my mother used to make BLTs. Yeah. Like I, I remember that clearly. My mom makes breakfast sandwiches that have bacon on them. Sure. So maybe, I mean, maybe that was the first one. I, I don't know. Something that our mom made. <laughs> mom, the first bacon sandwich we ever had was a mom sandwich. Yep. <laughs> Moms make good sandwiches. Yeah, they do. Kate Russell. Uh, hey. Yeah. She made my diary. Yeah, she's a toy customizer extraordinaire. We gave her a shout out in one of our videos. Which I, I keep meaning to email her to tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> it was our Funko Wishlist 2 video, I think. Okay. She said, uh, what made you start collecting pops, mystery minis, and all the other cool stuff you collect? And also, what is your favorite part about collecting? What made us start collecting? I think we just saw them because I remember having a conversation about it, like, oh, have you seen these Funko things? You bought that Donald Duck vinyl nation. You brought him everywhere. Yeah. And I think I wanted a toy that I could bring everywhere. And I started yeah. with, I think, a Ninja Turtle. But then I, then I found these Funkos. What is your favorite part about collecting? I really like taking pictures of them. I've put my art up of, you, of toys, and I've, I've sold a bit of it. You sold a lot. We should, you, I keep, you have kind of an Etsy thing, but I think you should branch out. Stay tuned. <laughs> Luke Sims, favorite superhero? Either Spider-Man or Batman, for sure. It's hard to be a Spider-Man fan because there haven't been good Spider-Man comics for the past 20 years. But back in the day, nothing is better than Spider-Man. Especially Stan Lee and Steve Ditko doing Spider-Man. Best comic ever. But, uh, Batman. <laughs> I can't speak to the comics, so I have to go off the movies. I love Superman. Oh, sure. You can't see him, but I got a poster right there. It's off screen. I'm not into the new stuff. No. But, like, the... You're talking about Christopher Reeve. Yeah. Yeah. If we're talking about movies, yeah, it's hard to beat Superman. I still go with Batman. <laughs> but Christopher Reeve. Emma Zhang. What is the weirdest experience at a con you've ever had? <laughs> Would that be when Eric Roberts signed my chest? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Medicon 2013, I believe it was. Oh, man. Uh, first, he yelled at me. Yeah, first he yelled at you because you were filming him. I was filming, even though I had a press pass. Right. Get the get, 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 get camera. Uh, yeah, and then you got him to sign your chest. Well, he was already, he was charging $20 for autographs. So I just I talk, I just said hi to him. I said I'm a big fan because I, I he, he's a great actor. He's a very good actor. I know you don't like him. And then later he was just and he he was just walking around, and I started filming him and he yelled at us again. Uh, and I asked him for an honor, asked him to sign the camera. That's right. And he said yeah. okay, which I was <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And then it when he would literally he tried to sign. The camera we had, which I was borrowing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were else. borrowing. It was going to be like, here's your camera. <laughs> By the way, it's signed by Eric Roberts. But it wouldn't work. So I, as a joke, I think I said, why don't you sign my chest? And he said, okay, lift up your shirt. The next thing I know, I'm in the middle of a convention the, the hall with my shirt up. Um, oh, God. Uh, thank you, Eric. The first of two encounters we've had with Eric Roberts. Perhaps many more to come. We're just, we're like this all the time, so pretty much anything we do is strange and awkward. Yeah, you throw Eric Roberts into the mix <laughs> and forget about it. Agent Simpson 327. Are you part of a fan base you are ashamed to admit about? I like country music. I always kind of have to apologize for that. 
I like all kinds of music, but I also like, I mean, people are often say, I like all music but country. I like country, especially old school. Like, I really like Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Conway Twitty, old school country. I even, I listen to new country as well. I like some of this new stuff. Zach Brown Band. He's great. I tell people that I listen to Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. Actually, Although, I could not buy the Taylor Swift CD at work. I was embarrassed about it. It's a really good CD. Yeah, I really like it. John Gaither, what happened to the rest of those Oreos from your taste testing video? I, gave, I made you take most you, of them. Yeah, I took <laughs> almost all of them, uh, but I brought them into work. Yeah. And our coworkers hated us for it. But they ate them. They ate them. If you want to know what happened to the Pringles, <laughs> they're still in my cupboard. <laughs> that was, I, I know, I really should clean my kitchen. <laughs> we gotta hurry this up or we're gonna lose battery. Uh oh. Should have filmed this one first. Shoot. The wisest wizards. What was your most miserable movie theater experience? I'm a big Rocky fan. The Sylvester Stallone boxing films, not Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm a big Stallone fan. In general, Rocky in particular. You know this. Everybody knows this. Seen them all in the theater. I don't think I saw the first one. I think maybe starting with number three, I saw them on the theater. And so, when Rocky Balboa, which was the sixth Rocky movie, came out a couple years ago, I was super excited. Rocky's back after like... It could have been like 15 years, I think, since the previous one. 10, 15 years. And so I went to see it opening day at the Mall of America by myself. Oh. Um, and towards the end, and I don't know if I'm going to regret saying this, but you asked, Wizard, um, like towards the end, like all the Rocky movies are structured the same way, blah, 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 blah. Then it's the big fight, the big boxing match. I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Like really bad uh, and it's like okay well I'll wait. the movie's almost over and then it reached a point where it's like okay I gotta go to the bathroom number two <laughs> so it's I don't know it's, I must have some some kind of upset stomach so I anyway so by the time I was done I mean I the need to go was urgent but it wasn't necessarily fast <laughs> so I was in there for a little bit a long enough that it's like, well, I'm not going to go back to the movie. Like, it's already, it's probably, it's what I'm going to go in and see, like, the last two seconds. <laughs> so, I, it's like, okay. So, I had to go home and, like, look up what happened at the end of the movie. Rocky Balboa ruined because I had diarrhea. Too much information? Should I edit that out? I know. They asked. Do you have a worse movie-going experience than that? No. Premiere Kicks, what is your favorite video you have ever made? Well, I don't believe we've posted the one I like. What's that? The Mirror Maze. Oh, really? That's your favorite? I really enjoy that. Oh. Um, maybe it's not the best one, but I I had fun. We visited a Mirror Maze. We have, it's, there's, a, there's audio in the background that might be flagged. That's why I haven't made it public yet. Also, because every time I'm going to make, we have a bunch that we haven't uploaded just because we have. We, then we come up with things where it's like time sensitive. Yeah. But I'll get the, I'll get the mirror maze up there. I like the. I edit most of them. You edit some. I edit most of them just because I like to edit, and so you allow me you're, the luxury to do it. And you're better. I'm not saying that. I am. But so I, videos that I like to watch or videos that I'm most proud of are the ones that sometimes I'll look at the footage and be like, what do I do with this? Like when we went to that horror con. That's not oh. our best video. But I think sometimes I'm proud of the fact that I'm able to take some of this footage and make some kind of narrative out of it. And nobody ever comments, hey, great editing, <laughs> which is fine because if I'm doing my job as an editor, you don't notice. XY Adventures. Congrats on 300. What else do you guys collect besides Funko Pops? I collect comic books. I don't collect as many as I used to, but I have a, a pretty large comic book collection. I collected clothes for Xena. 
Does that count? Yeah, I but was actually. I dog was, had a lot of clothes. I was thinking that. I didn't want to mention it, but she had a lot. Yeah. I don't even know if I can count all the jackets she had. They're very funny though. Yeah, she was a well dressed dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't like creepy about it though, was I? No. I didn't put her in dresses or anything. Sorry if I offended anyone. No, I mean you would buy her jackets because we live in Minnesota. Yeah. And it's cold and she was a tiny little dog. Right. Eline H. What is your most favo sci fi fantasy universe and what would be a cool character to put in there? Which isn't normally part of that universe. Example. Harry Potter and the X-Men universe. That's a fun question. I'm a big fan of the Dune novels by Frank Herbert. I think they're... I wouldn't say it's my favorite universe, but it's a really interesting, unique universe. Um, where there's space travel. Um, and the technology is really weird because there was a... kind of a, a revolution. The Butlerian Jihad where the humans revolted against, it was kind of a Terminator type situation where they revolted against thinking machines. So humans outlawed computers. So everybody takes this, people take this drug called the spice that give them like mental powers. So they don't even really need technology because people use like magic. It's a really, I'm not explaining it very well, but it's really neat. It's a really cool, unique universe that's so detailed because there's like seven or eight novels, more than that even. Um, and so a character that I would put into that universe would be Mario and Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? I don't know. <laughs> Can I put Xena in The Hunger Games? Definitely. I mean, she'd kick everyone's ass. Yeah, that's a good answer. Jambista. If you could wake up in the body of anyone else for a day, who would you be and what would you do? I've always wanted to be able to uh, dance. Not enough to take dancing lessons. But even if I took dancing lessons, I wouldn't be able to dance. So I think it'd be really cool to be somebody like Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire. That's what I know about dancing. <laughs> I think of Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire. <laughs> Just somebody who's, you know, athletic and graceful, because I'm neither of those things. What would I do? I would dance. I guess I would pick Jillian Michaels, because I, she is fit. She's fit. And I'm so not. <laughs> and it would, it would be nice to know what that's like for a day. Yeah. You think the show is awkward now? Imagine if it was me hosting it with Jillian, Jillian Michaels. Michaels. <laughs> She'd be screaming at you. Yeah, I like you better. <laughs> Star Shaped Gummy asks, If you had the chance to cameo in any film in the history of cinema, which film would that be and what role would you cameo as? I would be a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. Why would you be a munchkin? Big Slice 88. Who is your favorite X-Men? <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. Mystique. Okay. I think I'd say Cyclops. Cyclops was in X-Men number one. He's still around. He was, he's been the leader. Not, I mean, he was okay in the movies, but in the comics, Cyclops is where it's at. Cyclops is the coolest X-Men. Jasmine Ruiz. What was the most funniest high school story? Ooh. I thought Freaks and Geeks was pretty funny. That was a good high school story. Or are they talking about our high school experience? I'm not sure. I thought I thought it was about ours. My, uh, for me, high school was not funny. High school was not funny. Yeah, but check out Freaks and Geeks. All right. All the names are in the box. It's very do exciting. We, do we need to show them? Can you see that? This is not CG. It's a real paper. It's a real paper. Thanks for the questions, everybody. See you next week. Just kidding. Who, me? You. Nothing up my sleeves. Uh, if you can't read it, I'll read it. In line H. You win. 
What was this person's question again? I don't remember. The Harry Potter and the X Men universe question. Okay. Oh, I like that one. That was a good one. So, Eline, let us know your address and we'll send this out to you. Hopefully, you live in the United States. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll try to contact you or you contact us. And anyway, congratulations and thanks to everybody who entered. Thanks, guys. We'll do another one at 400, 500, 600. So tell your friends. Spread our videos so we can give away more stuff. What else do you have to say? <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks, especially you. You know who you are.